Welcome to another edition of Let's Talk Show. My name is Andrew James, and today it's my honor and privilege to have with us in studio a friend, a former student at McKenzie High School, and chief editor at News Source Guyana, Gordon Mosley. Hey, how are you doing, Andrew? Thanks for having me. What's up? Not much, man. Today I just wanted to check in with you. I know you're a busy guy. You're doing a lot of good things in Linden and for the country of Guyana. We do appreciate all you're doing, but I just wanted to take this opportunity to catch up with you. Yeah, man, it's been a while. It's been how many years now? I think nearly, I'll say about 23, 24 years. <laughs> We're old. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at our heads. <laughs> we came with matching heads. Hey, Gordon, can you tell me a little bit about your experience as it relates to your time at McKenzie High School, if you don't mind sharing with us quickly? Uh, well, I started McKenzie High in uh, 1993, September of 1993. I remember that first day as if it were yesterday because that was the day with Death to Dublin pushed me down on that road, hit <laughs> on that road between Lycius and Main Building. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going across for, I think we had food and nutrition because you had to cross and go over to the food and nutrition department. And I was there, I stopped in the middle of the side of the road to tie my laces. It was, it was a, like a red sand road then. Yes. And I just felt someone push me from the back. So I leaned forward and broke the fall with my hands. I looked around and there was Odetta Dublin, Pastor Dublin daughter uh -oh. from Retrieve. Uh -oh. <laughs> I could call shout. <laughs> okay. And I said, and I looked at her and said, you all use a real ass. <laughs> And she went and she she complained on me. Okay. And um, she complained to Miss Phillips. Right. And Miss Phillips forwarded the uh, the complaint to the head teacher. And so when I got to the head teacher, Miss Gibson, I didn't know what excuse to say. So I said, you know, uh, Miss Ass is in the Bible. Yeah. yeah. And she said it doesn't mean in that term. And you know, I got a free pass there. So that was my first day, my first week in Mackenzie High, but. I spent five years with Mackenzie High, and those were uh, some of the best years, mm -hmm. if not the best years of my life. I have no regrets about uh, going to Mackenzie High. I started off in Topaz, mm -hmm. ended up in the business stream, and I did literature uh, from the science stream because when I was in for business, uh, they were not offering uh, English literature at the time. Right. So I would, I would sneak out and go to 4S1 and Ms. Jervis would be teaching literature across there. And so um, so that's how I uh, got through McKenzie High. Uh, I wasn't a big sport person. Mm -hmm. I tried running one year. <laughs> Sir Daniels encouraged us, out in front, Cambridge House, out the front, Cambridge House. And you know, you're, you're motivated right. in those meetings. And in, in I think that, that would, there were, there were two, two agri classes in the main building compounded, they would keep meetings leading up to sport. And so mm -hmm. when he charged you and, you know, I, I ran just one year, I got a third in a race with four people. I think, uh -oh. the, fourth person, I think the fourth person dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm gonna still claim that bronze medal, huh? <laughs> and, and I came okay. well, I came well dressed with the gears. <laughs> Nike, Nike, spandex and Nike vests. Yes. And some of my friends had a good laugh. Uh, because I was in the race with Dennis McDonald and there was um, Rutherford, Randy Rutherford, and there was someone who won. Can't remember who won. <laughs> Wasn't paying attention to who was winning. Yeah. Was trying to beat Randy and trying to beat Dennis. Yeah. Uh, but um, that was my first uh, sporting experience. I was involved a lot in debating and in yeah. poetry. And so I represented uh, Mackenzie High and Linden at a number of regional poetry speaking and elocution competitions mm -hmm. and then i moved on to the national stage representing uh the tongue a couple of times on behalf of mackenzie high then i got involved in debating uh did uh, debating for a bit uh at the class level and then i did a couple at the regional level and then cxc and all that was coming up and so um who's dr mcdonald now Roscoe, he was my replacement on the debating team. Right. And, uh, you know, but those were some of the best years of my life. I remember a lot of stuff at McKenzie High as if uh, these were all things happening yesterday or last week. 
right. uh, because for some strange reason, uh, I have good memory <laughs> when it comes to McKenzie High, good memories. And so I remember a lot of things uh, from my years at McKenzie High, and I've stayed in touch with many of the people I went uh, through those five years with. Uh, so many of them I speak to almost daily. Mm. And so we have a connection. I think it's because of that connection. Um, you know, we celebrated and we, we enjoyed our time there at McKenzie High. Right. I, I can remember you as always a, a, a good talker. I know you were cut out to be a debater. We, we, Don't we make always... it sound nice, but a good talker. It's about Mama. like tough enough. No. <laughs> <laughs> We we always knew we always knew you were gonna make it and you were gonna make it big. I personally I saw you as somebody I I used to always think Garden Mosley was gonna get into politics and do something big for Linda. And mm -hmm. and, and I, I think all of your peers used to respect you um in, in that way. When can you tell me a little bit about when did the light switch moment actually happen? When did you realize that boy, you know what, I am gonna get into journalism and one day my dream of leading out and being a champion debater and being a good role model in, in terms of uh, journalism. When, when did that light switch moment happen for you and you realized this dream is possible and, and I can make this happen? I was about uh, 15 years old, I think. Um, I was in fourth form going into fifth form. Yeah, I think that was it. And there was this news, the Linwick news, Mm -hmm. in Linden, um, done by Copeland Advertising, Cope Advertising and Marketing Agency. And um, it was first hosted by Andrea Milo. Then there was Dario McClemon, and there was Kathy Wilson, and then there was Ruth Gittins. And uh, she was the anchor of this Linden Weekend News at the time. Right. And I remembered uh, they had a story on a weekend and somehow I think it was because I knew the story. And so I, I played brave and I called uh, Copeland's pharmacy and I put on this big voice like, could I speak to Mr. Erlen Copeland? Yeah. And they were like, yes, sure. And he came on the line and I said, um, sir, I was watching the news last night and there was a story that I thought could have been done better and explained some stuff. And he said, you know, maybe you should come in and have a little conversation with me. You sound like someone who's interested in news. Right. And uh, I went the next day to the Copeland's Pharmacy. That was right down there on Republic Avenue. Yes. In that Kisoon's building. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to meet Mr. Copeland. And when he walked right past me and he told one of the uh, young ladies working in the pharmacy, there's a young man who's supposed to come and see me. As soon as he comes, send him in. And I said, oh, sir, I'm that person. Mm. And he looked around and looked down because I was sitting on this young school boy. And I said, really? Come in. And so he said, tell me about what you want to become. And I was telling him, oh, I, I want to become a lawyer, this and that. And, and he said, oh, maybe, you know, um, when school closes, uh, because I think we were heading into the um, that July, August period, right. you can come, come on by the radio state, the TV, the TV uh, studio, and we can work along there. And so I went across and I was really fascinated from day one about how they put the news together. Mm -hmm. And so that sort of triggered uh, my interest. And when I did my first story, I remembered um, teachers whispering and students whispering, say, I feel like a big boy, yeah, you know, because yeah. your name calling on TV reporting for the Linwick News. Right, right. <laughs> and so that really triggered my interest. And then around that same time, uh, my brother came back from uh, the U.S. and my sister came back uh, from Barbados for a family function. And they both left their video cameras with me. Mm -hmm. And so that sort of triggered another interest. And so like uh, going into fifth form, I didn't uh, realize I was going to make a career out of this. Mm -hmm. I always liked storytelling. Uh, but... Um, this was a whole new thing for me. And so when I, when I left McKenzie High, I just went head first into the field of journalism. And, you know, it's been no turning back since then. I, I, I want to commend you for doing good work. Recently, I was at um, just uh, pre-election. 
I was at a Guyana organization event, uh, a Guyanese organization event here in Toronto, and um, I was uh, I was asked to do the MC. Not sure why, but they asked me to do it. I said, sure, you know, I don't have anything better to do. So I, I picked that up, and during one of the presentation towards the end, I, I had an open mic discussion, and one of the ladies actually was a president of the association. She stood up and she said, I don't subscribe to any news agency in Guyana except Gordon Mosley. And I says, yeah, Gordon Mosley, we actually went to school together. So, I mean, I, I personally want to commend you for, for doing Thanks good journalism. For good journalism. You, you are respected in Guyana and around the world. And I think that's something you should be proud of yourself. And based on your story of, of you getting the blessing from Copeland, I just want to encourage you personally to work with some other young person. It being, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know, a young student from whichever high school or wherever. Try to try to give back in that way if at all yeah. possible. So you can give someone a break and be a blessing to someone the same way Mr. Copeland was um, for you. Just off the top, um, who would you recommend to be on this show after you? If I may presumptuously ask, who do you think might be a good candidate to come on next? There are so many good people I think um, it would be good to hear from. I think Marianne Burnett. I would like to hear from Marianne Burnett and uh, Natoya Peters. When you went to Mackenzie High, uh, there were these figures uh, these people that you really look up to and admired. And a lot of them were folks uh, who were involved in sport. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember too, uh, there was uh, this young man, uh, Russell, he was a, a prefect. He would be another good candidate. Um, there's Sophia Collier, my good friend who I speak to almost every other day. Okay. Um, and there's the chancellor of the judiciary. I don't think a lot of folks realize that the Chancellor of the Judiciary in Guyana acting is uh, from Mackenzie High. She wouldn't be in the 90s crew, <laughs> much older. Uh, but um, I think she would be a good candidate too. There's Omiana Hamilton, who I went to school with. She was in our batch. Uh, she served as a magistrate in Guyana. And there's so yeah. many other people uh, from Mackenzie High who are doing well for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something we don't realize. Uh, there are so many people in their respective fields. And I think because we've not had uh, reunions and stuff like that, we have not been able to catch up. But sometimes like I, I walk into the, the, the Guyana Defense Force sometimes to cover an assignment and some of the senior officers coming out there are folks who went to Mackenzie High. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I have to call the police force uh, for a, an interview and one of the senior officers like, hey, mostly we're going to go went to Mackenzie High. I've been to hospitals and seen doctors. I've seen nurses. You know, I've seen engineers working on major projects right. that all went to Mackenzie High. And I think sometimes we don't celebrate ourselves enough. Uh, we don't keep abreast of what we've been doing over these years. And I think that's something important uh, for us to do. You know, I'm in the field of journalism. I've been here for the past 22 years. Don't say it loudly. <laughs> but... Um, you know, so I've had a front seat to a lot of what's been happening in Guyana. And so it always feels good uh, when I see uh, folks who went to Mackenzie High doing exceptionally well for themselves. Right. I think there's a whole lot more we could be doing in terms of uh, getting the school comfortably uh, back on its feet. I mm -hmm. think um, the school has been performing well too over the years. And so my, my kudos to the teachers and the students over the years who attended Mackenzie High. I think they've done well over these years right. to keep the green flying. And uh, so, you know, you can pick anyone. I think anyone would be a great, uh, a great interview interviewee uh, for you. Uh, and I, I believe we just got to do more to celebrate, celebrate Region 10, celebrate Linden, celebrate uh, Mackenzie High. I think that is something, you know, we, because I've been back to the school a number of times uh, I've been, I was there uh, recently as last year uh, hosting uh, the speech night ceremony. I was there before giving the charge uh, to their graduating class. Mm -hmm. And um, I've uh, been there meeting, I had about one or two meetings with the Old Students Association. And I was placed on the board of um, the school. I haven't attended any meeting, but they would keep in touch 
with WhatsApp messages. Uh, but um, I think there's a whole lot more that could be done for the school. I think what we need to is to have uh, associations like the 90s group and the official old students associations and we can have a New York chapter and a Toronto chapter all working together to see how we can sort of embrace our students and our teachers more because Mackenzie High has really put out some very fine young people in Guyana yes. and um, I don't think we recognize it enough and I don't think we celebrate it enough. We've had people who've served in the US military, who've served in the Guyana military, as I mentioned before, other people in broadcasting, other people in media, people in uh, electrical and, and automotive and their teachers. There's so many fields. And I think it's just something that we need to recognize more and celebrate ourselves more. I don't think we do enough of that. I think many of up, many of us, uh, growing up in Linden, uh, your, your parents would warn you, don't big up your chest too much. Don't tap yourself on your shoulder too much. You like big up. And we don't do that enough with our young people today. You know, we don't big up yourself enough because you're thinking your mom in your head, say, boy, stop bigging up yourself. Stop, stop knocking your own back or rubbing your own back or whatever is the, the slang they would use. But I think we've got to start going back to those days, start mm. celebrating ourselves more. Uh, so the young people who are attending Mackenzie High now can see, you know, they've done well. Right. You know, I've had my sit. I had sisters who went to Mackenzie High. I've had, uh, I had a, I have a niece who went to Mackenzie High and they've all done pretty good things and doing good things for themselves. Mm. I miss Miss Russell Borgo though. Right. So, you know, I think we could keep a reunion and Miss Russell do the catering well, well, the name Miss Russell, 22 years ago, and I think <laughs> I think I still owe the lady $20, right? <laughs> I deliberately brought it up. <laughs> well, just in case. If you have to have a $20, you see, please, please pay it. Please pay the lady the $20 for me. I will on your behalf. <laughs> um, I just want to let you know that um, this this show was intended to be hosted by you, but I oh. guess yeah, man, for sure. But I, I I know you were busy, and I guess they couldn't they couldn't find it, they they couldn't quite track you down. Um, I'm easy track, I, man. I'm I'm filling in for you. This is not my show. This is actually your show. Well, let so, me know when I can take back my show. <laughs> you can take him back. <laughs> Send the Send the fancy flat screen with the logo and so too. <laughs> yeah, you can take it. And the plant, huh? You see, we got the palm. Yeah. The palm got them big now. <laughs> you in green, I in yellow. I know what you're trying to say. <laughs> I got that red on the bottom. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll put you in the spot garden. Mm -hmm. If you were to ask me a question, what would that question be? Any question? How, take a shot. How have you been? I'm, I'm doing wonderful. How um, have I'm you just, been? Uh, like I haven't, I haven't been in touch with you for all these years. <laughs> Tell us what you've been up to. You just well, vanish. That's you know that that's conversation for not an interview. <laughs> and you went to Erno Drive Nursery School, right? Yes, sir. You know what? Good. So I've known you since nursery school. Your mom, your mom was at the graduation, and I have a picture of her with a polka dot dress, uh, a blue a green. polka dot dress. The green. Yeah, I think it was a green or a blue. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But I remember, I remember her giving me that, my little certificate of achievement at, at the nursery level, which was <laughs> probably the only certificate of achievement I have. <laughs> You've been doing pretty good for yourself. So. <laughs> it might be two of us. Anyways, You've been doing pretty I, good for yourself. Uh, how, how's your brother doing, though? They're, they're, they're all doing good. He got married and he's... he's uh, since, he read, since he read off with, with one of my classmates, yeah, Samantha yeah, yeah. He, Spencer, he, right? He stole, he stole the, the goose that laid a golden egg there. He's doing all right. <laughs> they're, they're, they're doing very well. Yeah, but um, say hi to them for me. I will. But how I will have you been? Question. Don't yeah? try to escape the question. How have you been? Yeah, I'm doing fantastic. I'm doing all right. Still crazy as a bed bug, you know what I mean? I'm just... I'm mm -hmm. just being... Nothing has changed. I, I'm just getting old, you know, but... um. And this old age thing is a ridiculous thing. It's, well, what, what are you going to do? It's you like, know? like, it just hits you. Yes. Like the other day I was in Linden and someone called me Big Uncle. Oh boy. Like, 
like a look wrong in slow motion. Because you know, you still feel young. Yeah. You like yeah. to believe you're young, but then you just wake up with some aches in places you didn't know existed. Yeah. And you said, Boy, this is this is age catching up on me. Yeah. Let's. Uh, I, I I know you're busy, so I'll, 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 we we we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. But I got one final question for you. Sure. Um, while there are a lot of groups, um, and I, and I appreciate your 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 equation, your suggestion. I think we have a lot of groups doing great stuff. And mm -hmm. my hope and my and I, I'm 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 being as real as I can. My hope and my vision for all these groups is that one day we can all come together under one umbrella, and start to function and and do solid direct, tangible, small little things from a Ken GI school. Yeah. If I may ask you, what do you think um, is one example of a paid forward moment? What do you think we can do as a small group to influence change in the life of one single student at the Ken GI school? You know, I remember uh, when I was uh, in first, second and third form, uh, there was a program in place uh, where you would have persons from overseas um, sponsor a child. And so every month for a year, uh, they would um, put forward some money to help in in, the, in that child's education, stuff like that. I think that is something we can do. I think an initiative we can also do too is COVID-19 has taught us so much and has changed the way the world works. And there's still a lot of children in Guyana and in Linden who might not have that access uh, to a tablet. And I think if uh, we can probably launch some sort of initiative uh, where we can get a couple of tablets up and we donate it uh, to some deserving students of the school who would then be able to use that. Uh, because going forward, uh, you know, in Guyana right now, uh, schools are not going to be open in September. They're not sure when uh, we're going to reopen schools. And so a lot of children will have to be at home. And for many of them, uh, they might not have the access and the equipment needed for that home learning. And I think that's an initiative uh, we can probably look at. I'll get a few tablets and we uh, assist uh, some students and possible teachers of the school who might be in need. I think that is something we can probably look at. Okay, can you spare two more minutes, Gordon, if possible? Sure. Okay, I'll put you on the spot. How do you answer this question? For someone, I guess, overseas wanting to give back and don't know where, what would you say to that person? Because the sad reality with people, like you said, there's a lot of success stories coming out from McKenzie High School, and I personally know of, of, of many of our, our friends that we went to school with that. They're doing very well, unlike yeah. me and yourself. These people have money, and they're in a position whereby they can comfortably give back. But it begs the question where and who. And there's always this disconcern and this trust, uh, concern that I don't trust this person. It being that there's no established association or organization that's registered and of, of good standing that you can direct your money to and see your money work. What do you do? What do you say as an individual um, to someone that asks as, as a question of that? Uh, no, I think um, there's an old students association that it, it may not have been active mm -hmm. as it needs to be, uh, but I think uh, folks like OJ, uh, who's a teacher there, and um, Julian DeHart, uh, they've been working along with that. We have Terry Ann Norris. I think if we can put together like a very small group and get that and support that, that association to more, uh, then we can channel uh, stuff through them. And, you know, I, we can have a, in the day, in the, in the age of Zoom, we can keep regular meetings like this and, you know, accountability would not be an issue, mm -hmm. but I think we would need to get it going and um, have it be more active. And I don't see a problem with us supporting that. I think those are, you know, people like you and I, who are really looking uh, to develop Mackenzie High and um, to see how much we can give back. And so I think once there's a group of people, a very small committee, five, six, seven persons, and they can be the ones accepting and making donations on behalf of uh, former students and former teachers, uh, we, will, we can work with that. Excellent. One final question, Gordon. 
What is the like first initiative? Like fourth final question. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hard to find you. So when, I, when, when, when right. we finally get you, we want to take full advantage. That's good. What do you think is the first initiative? What do you think the first in initiative should be? Well, as I said, tell us about a small, tangible uh, project that we can realize as a group without it being cost in millions. Yeah, that's why I said the tablet, the tablet initiative is something we can do. Um, and I think um, that is something that we can easily look at. We can ask folks to donate a tablet. Um, it doesn't have to be a fancy Apple uh, tablet. There's some nice Samsung ones that are um, not cheap, but are um, affordable, I think um, we can do that and we can give it to deserving students. I think that would be a, 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 an easy and immediate way of um, giving back. And it's going to come in handy because as I mentioned, uh, there, there are going to be some students uh, moving forward uh, who might not be in a position uh, to have that ready access. And so, you know, um, you can count me on board if there's an initiative like that's getting started. I'm going to be one of the first people to make a donation towards it. All right, Gordon, I, I think we'll leave it there. On behalf of the admin of the McKenzie High School Alumni Association, North American Chapter, I want to take this opportunity to thank you very much for taking your time out to share with us. It's, it's so nice and refreshing to catch up. I think it's unfortunate that we have to do it on Zoom, but that's a new reality. And yeah. I, I appreciate your feedback. I, I honestly appreciate your insight. I know you've always been a positive guy. You've always looked out for the underdog. And I, and I see that and I hear that in your voice today. And I really, really appreciate having you on today. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. And Thanks for having me. This afternoon on News Source Guyana at 6. No, we're off today. Saturday and Sunday we relax. Oh, all right. Well, I'll see you. <laughs> Catch you Monday. <laughs> Thanks right. a lot. Good night. God bless all you guys. Stay safe. Same to you. Yeah, man. All right.